if you let me in, if you pay attention right now for the next 28 minutes and 16 seconds, I'm going to do something to inspire and instruct. But additionally, I'm going to do something that's going to influence the way you conduct your business today. And I don't care what you tell me your line is. You can tell me I do high-end retirement annuities. I'm working with those guys now that do seven, eight, ten million dollars in annuities a year and greater. I can tell you if you're doing final expense only, I can impact and, and, and increase your income. And I would imagine that's what most of you are here to do. You didn't come here to learn something that's going to keep you exactly the same as you are today. Did anybody come to grow, change, and develop? Oh, now we're talking. Eight percent nation, how are y'all this morning? All right, that's a little bit better. That's a little bit better energy. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. I've got a presentation I'm going to walk through. But my mom taught me something when I was a little bitty boy, about three years old. We would be in the grocery store, and I'd say, Mama, Mama, Mama. And she'd say, Boy, what do you want? Mama, Mama, Mama. And she said something to me at age three that at 53 remains. She says, Boy, don't tell me, don't say anything important until you have someone's attention. So I'm Brandon Clay. I'm going to talk to you today about becoming a six-figure senior market advisor. And having had Olivia and Mike kick this thing off relative to the Medicare message, I see we may have a little bit of separation in the room in terms of what we all do as a main line and for a living. But as you'll see, becoming a six-figure senior market advisor is not simply being about Medicare. So here's the thing. I opened out with Michael Jackson, Man in the Mirror. A year ago, I was in a conference much like this in Aruba or Cabo or somewhere with One Life America, who I work with today in Heartland Financial Group. The room represented almost $20 million of life premium, but none of them did Medicare. And I literally stood up on a stage much like this and told my CEO, Scotty Elliott, I'm about to go off script. And I literally said to them, if you can give me three minutes of your time, to describe to you how you can improve and increase your business, I'll do Michael Jackson for you. I know it doesn't look like I can do Michael Jackson now, but hold on, you'll be able to see something here in a little bit. But so here's what I literally said to them. If you let me in, if you pay attention right now for the next 28 minutes and 16 seconds, I'm gonna do something to inspire and instruct. But additionally, I'm going to do something that's going to influence the way you conduct your business today. And I don't care what you tell me your line is. You can tell me I do high-end retirement annuities. I'm working with those guys now that do seven, eight, ten million dollars in annuities a year and greater. I can tell you if you're doing final expense only, I can impact and, and, and increase your income. And I would imagine that's what most of you are here to do. You didn't come here to learn something that's going to keep you exactly the same as you are today. Did anybody come to grow, change, and develop? Oh, now we're talking. So I'm also an author, and I'm a storyteller. The book that I would actually tell you is going to help some of you in this room is Six Hours to Six Figures. Yes, I've got a book, uh, uh, some books on the back, and I've got books on Amazon, shameless plug. But some of us need to be developed to the point of the next stage of our career. So as a storyteller, my, my, my day up time up here with you today is a five-act play. Act number one, what do you see? So I'd ask everybody in the room to see and take a quick look. Some of you have seen this before. But some of you immediately see opportunity is nowhere. I don't want to do Medicare. I don't want to do Advantage. I don't want to do supplements. I don't want to do indemnity. I don't want to do final expense. I applaud Brian having come from the debit world, which is literally akin to final expense. Poor chopping and door knocking. Getting $2.50 from Mr. Charlie every week. That was a man in my neighborhood in the 70s with a yellow Volkswagen. The people loved him. And when Mr. Charlie showed up with that $5,000 check when somebody passed, he was a lifesaver. But I'll admit this, and I don't mind a little bit of snootiness. I'm not here to proselytize or convert you into the things that I believe can help you generate a higher level of income. But some of you are leaving some of your clients exposed to the level that, quite frankly, you've underserved them. And that's not fair either. That means you took the money and ran. Now, it doesn't mean you have to do what I'm going to ask you to do, but some of you immediately know that opportunity is what? Now here. Everybody shout, now here. So I want everybody to stand up for a moment. Everybody stand just for a moment. No, it's not one of those exercises. No, it's not jumping jacks. No, it's not doing something crazy. No, it's not repeat after me. None of that. 
but I'm going to ask everybody that is going to make six figures this year in the 8% nation, if you're going to make six figures this year, remain standing. Don't, don't, and nobody take any offense at the ones that are being developed that are on their way, but if you're not going to earn six figures, have a seat. If you're not going to earn six figures, have a seat. If you're not going to earn six figures, do what? Have a seat. Now I'm going to ask everybody that is sitting to clap for these people that are standing. Don't hate, celebrate. We're not serving hater raid in this joint. But now here comes the question. And this is where I'm going to challenge even the most highest profile wealth management people in this room. If you're making a six-figure renewal this year, I woke up and money fell into my bank account and I'm going to get six figures in renewal. Keep remain standing. Everybody else, sit down. Now, for those that are standing, give them a real round of applause. Okay, so I'm asking people not to proselytize, not to pass judgment, come a little bit off the high horse of I don't want to do those products because I would ask a show of hands. How many of you standing up do Medicare? Oh my goodness, look around, look around, look around, and look at my hand. How dead, uh uh, don't leave it on the table. We had to straighten that out for me to get your attention because six figure renewal income is what happens in the arena that I'm about to show you. I've got agents right now in something known as the AEP, annual election period, that are out there running right now that do nothing normally but final expense, and they are generating six figure renewal income. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Now you can go and have your seat too. So now I'm going to do a little bit of a word scramble. Everybody look at that and see what you see. Don't try to, don't shout anything out because there's some S's and some H's and some I's and some T's in there, but don't worry about that. So now I want you to, I want to say, is, it is this. These are the three words I want to pull out. So the people that stood up and said they make six figures and the ones that had to sit down, the ones sitting down should recognize something. Those people that are making six-figure income and certainly those making six-figure renewal income are gifted. But so are you. Your turn is coming. I remember thinking and talking to Cody a moment ago, which what he's done here is absolutely amazing at his age, number one. Generally, for anyone in any age, I'm 53. I tried something like that when I was 27 years old. Filled the room with 600 seats. My wife, Natalie, is right there. 50 people showed up. But I kept saying, oh, one day my turn is coming. But I heard that voice, the voice that we all know and recognize that said, Brandon, your turn is coming, but you need to be ready. You need to get ready and be ready. Everybody in this room has got to get ready and be ready. So then, David in the Bible, when it said that your gift will make room for you and set you in front of great people, every day you're sitting with a client, believe it or not, you're sitting in front of someone great. And if you use your gift, it will make room. Because they're not running out of money. What happened when we went away from the gold standard? They printed more. You tell me you want to make a six-figure renewal and that's the, limit, the resources are limited? I'm going to tell you no. They will print more money and it will make room for you. So it, everybody shout it. Yeah. It is your power. It is that thing that you're gifted in. And it actually represents what you do better than most. And some people call it the it factor or your gift. How many of you have been in insurance more than three years? That's your gift. Because the 8% nation says that 92% don't make it past their first year. So if we're operating in our gift, let's maximize our gift. Is, the second word, Here's the thing, if you're not making a six-figure renewal income or a six-figure income, it's because is has got you. And here's what I always say, is fear, is doubt, is chaos, a lack of a strategy. What's holding you back from maximizing the opportunities that are absolutely in front of you right here, right now? And then I will tell you that your is, no matter what it is, Brandon, I don't get good leads. Brandon, I don't have money. Brandon, my clients can't afford this. Brandon, my, I don't like to hear all those are is what? Excuses. For those making a six-figure renewal income, their is hasn't taken over. And I always tell people, no matter what, your it is bigger than your is. There is no is, whatever it is that's blocking or challenging you right now, that can overcome your it or your gift factor. 
So it's time to get your it together. Turn to your neighbor and say, get your it together. Get your it together. It's time to get your it together. That means you've got to work on, refine, hone, and master your gift. And if you've been in this business three years or more, this is your gift. This is your industry. Embrace it. So this, to me, this is what you want. Everybody got here today, paid the money to get into this ticket, to do something about their life, about this. This is your goal, your dream. It's what you desire in this life. So I'm going to talk to you about Medicare for a minute. Most of you have heard this number, 10,000. What does that represent, anybody? How many people are turning 65? How often? Every day. Every day. 10,000. So this, 24% of those people are choosing Medicare supplement. 24% of 360, uh, 3,650,000 people are choosing Medicare supplement. 33% rapidly achieving, uh, uh, rising to 41% are choosing Medicare Advantage. That means in first year commission, first year commission, I'm gonna repeat it, how much? First year commission is close to a billion dollars. You came here for something. You came here for some this. What is your this? Your it is your gift. It's the insurance business. Your is is either myopathy around the products you focus on today, or it's the barriers that you think exist to keep you from going into other arenas. But your this, while nothing can be totally quantitative around money and goals and numbers, but the qualitative sides of life increase rapidly when you have money. A six-figure renewal income is in here, but the question I ask is, how much of this is yours? And I know some of you are doing the math. That's fine. Take 3.5 million, divide it by 33%, multiply it by $480. That's the first year uh, aging in amount for most areas besides Jersey, California, and some other places. And then that is your first year commission. With Medicare products, Medicare supplements pay a six-year level. Medicare Advantage plays a lifetime of roughly 240 per member per year. So if you use your it, the this you want is inevitable. Okay. Everybody shout, I got this. If you want it, it's here. Number two, act number two, get your Captain Kirk on. If you're going to get your it together, you're going to have to become Captain Kirk. Now, how many people are over the age of 50 in the room? Yeah, I, I, look, I know there's a lot of generation X, Ys, and, and whatever else is younger than me, X, Y, Z, was examining your zipper when I was a kid. I'm not sure what it means today. But I'm not talking about the Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, uh, and, and, and that group of Star Trek. I'm talking about William Shatner, for, uh, DeForest Kelly. Yeah, give me some hand clap for the old vintage Star Trek. Gene Roddenberry. But on, in one of those episodes, it was called The Arena. This, this superior race put all of them on this planet. And so they landed on the planet, and then they isolated Captain Kirk and this creature called the Gorn. Anybody remember this episode? Oh, uh, and then the, the superior race told Captain Kirk that, that everything that he needed to subdue his enemy was indigenous to the planet. So Captain Kirk, who could not overmatch the Gorn, found sulfur, carbon, diamonds, uh, bamboo, and rope. And he fashioned a gunpowder, and he blew the Gorn and submitted him. He didn't kill him. Everybody knows the episode. There was always a moral to the story. Captain Kirk's going to take the high ground. But he, he subdued his enemy using the tools that were already there. So for the 97% for the that sat down, when I asked you, were you generating a six-figure renewal, but yet when Mike and Olivia asked, who doesn't want to touch Medicare, then there's a juxtaposition there that almost doesn't make sense. It's counterintuitive. It's paradoxical. It's diametrically opposed. Those are all the big words a southern guy with a southern draw can give you, but I'm throwing them out there. Why in the world would you not take what's in the environment? Final expense, Medicare supplement, Medicare Advantage, and hospital indemnity. Add that to the Molotov cocktail of what you do for them at the high end of, of wealth management, of retirement management. They've got more questions than just what they do with their money. 
So if you do that, there's the histogram, another fancy word. But this is actually how an agent that employs the strategy that I engage, that focuses on final expense, takes the first sale. Final expense pays really good the first year. What does it do the second year? Woo! Not so good. But Medicare Advantage, Medicare Supplement, pays good. It pays level. And if you put 100 members under management, you're getting roughly $25,000 a year per member, per year. After you do that two or three years and you've got three, four, five hundred people on your books, that is how you generate a six-figure renewal income. So, act number three, how many people in the room are doing final expense as a focus? Final expense as a focus, final expense as a focus. Fi raise your hands high and proud. You're not on the low end of the totem pole. To me, the final expense agents are the warriors. Anybody that wakes up in the morning and says, I'm going to hop a porch, knock on a door cold, is a warrior to me. You've already won the battle between your ears. The six inches here, when you hit the threshold of the porch, you're already amazing in my book. But final expense shouldn't be final. It should be a beginning. If we conduct an experiment called the last 10 people you sold and says, hey, by the way, did you sell them? Did you, did you happen to purchase Medicare, MedAdvantage, Indemnity? Did you roll over your 401k? Seven out of 10 of them, based on the statistical analysis, will tell you, yes, I did, baby. The one thing that you'll find out, though, is they didn't buy it from you. And I'm like, Brian, I hate to lose. And I'm the nicest guy in the world, but I will do everything behind the scenes to make sure that when my turn comes and you're going to have to make room for me, I'm not here to take over, but make room. I'm not here to get over, but make room. Somewhere excellence will outdo someone that's complacent. I remember having a dream one time. I know I'm going to digress into storytelling. I was meeting my grandfather in Fayetteville, Georgia, in this dream, and he said, baby, take this money right here. And I reached in, grabbed the silver dollar, and I went off running. My granddaddy gave me a silver dollar. My granddaddy gave me a silver dollar. When I turned around, he literally said, but I was trying to give it all to you. Some of us are running away with the silver dollar of the one product that we're comfortable with, leaving the bigger opportunity on the table. So when you're in a final expense appointment, a little bit of instruction here, you should be telling people who you are, what you do while you're there. My name is Brandon Clay. I'm an agent extraordinaire. Today I'm here to help you with final expense, but I also do Medicare Advantage, Medicare Supplement, hospital indemnity plans, may be able to save you some money. But for right now, let's take care of one of the most important things you can take care of, which is making sure your family doesn't suffer when you die. Then in a final expense appointment, there's four key questions. Who are your doctors? What medicines do you take? When have you, have you been in the hospital in the last 12 months? What do you pay when you go to the hospital? I don't have to ask them to bring out their cards. I don't have to ask them to show. I don't want to get distracted from what I'm there for, but I want to start preparing for what? The next sale, the next service. My shirt says SMA 100K, serve, deserve. Because in order to serve at a high level, you've got to be knowledgeable. But if you're knowledgeable, that service, according to Emerson and the Law of Compensation, for those of you that have read it, if you can't tell, I'm a nerd and a little bit of an erudite person. I love books, but Law of Emerson says, if you give, it comes back. That's also biblical. Give, and it should be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall the carriers give renewal income for life under your bosom for having served? Uh, some of y'all called uh, Pentecostals got that. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm hearing it. So here's the thing. I've done this now. Now, how many people have heard the urban legend about Medicare and, oh, you don't want to get involved, they'll take your license. Anybody? Raise your hand. It's okay. It's okay. So how many people are doing annuities in here, wealth management? The people doing annuities and wealth management, I shouldn't even have to talk to you about Medicare Advantage. Why? Because people in that kind of net worth category need what? Medicare supplements. I don't want to do Medicare Advantage. I have to do AHIP, pass with a 90, three exams, two, two weekends of, of reading and listening. Medicare supplement, click clack contract. <laughs> now, you may be dangerous in five minutes, but you're ready in five minutes. And a wealth managing annuity person that's not doing Medicare supplement is really not serving their client. I'm going to keep going. But if I'm a final expense agent, and I hop that porch and I knock that door and I'm just getting into my business here. If I, did, if I actually get a policy, the government says that's an existing business relationship. It specifically says EBR. 
I can immediately turn the corner and say, oh, I want to help you now with your Medicare Advantage. Medicare Advantage, like Rumpelstiltskin or like Beetlejuice. I can say it all I want to when I have a what? Client. There's no compliance about you reaching out to a client. Now, you still have to get a scope or you have to get a PTC. So what I tell every poor chopping, door knocking, final expense agent is do not be afraid if what you're focused on is door knocking, poor chopping, getting into the house to sell a policy. So I say it like this, a little bit colloquial. That's a fancy word for saying this is my English. If I have a, e, a, 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 P, a, a, a one of those BRCs, business reply cards, and it's a life BRC, and I have a policy which gives me an EBR, and I get a SOA or a PTC, as far as compliance is concerned, I'll never be SOL. Ah, some of y'all got that, right? Can the final expense agents give me one whoop whoop right there? If you do that, I've got agents now that went like this a year ago. I did my Michael Jackson song and dance, and right now they're telling me, I'm at 150 clients. I'm going to get $32,000 next year in what they consider to be base salary. I said, wash, rinse, and what? Repeat. So number, act number four, use your it, your gift, which I'm asking you to expand your horizons. Use your gift to serve. So this is what it looks like when somebody's on Medicare. Anybody remember the great Carl Walenda out of Jersey that used to cover those, that used to walk across the high planks and didn't have a safety net? Carl Walenda, anybody, anybody, anybody? Carl Walenda, oh yeah, I got my, my New York man Joe, right? Okay, I got Joe the new New York. So Carl Walenda, so when somebody's on Medicare, they're literally walking a tightrope. They pay $134 a month for the privilege, but they could fall off that tightrope with a copay of 183, 20% coinsurance, 1340 for hospitalization. And then don't let us talk about part D, donut hole, coverage gap, in, in formulary, tier three, five, six. You think it's complicated to you and you don't want to do it? What do you think that means to them? But here's the thing, we're not selling insurance, we're covering gaps. I walked into a house one time, maybe about, I started in 1996 during the Olympics in Atlanta, working for United Healthcare as an agent, and a lady, I knocked on the door, it was a preset appointment, so I could knock on the door, um, and she said, oh, you the insurance man. I said, no, 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 ma'am. I said, no, 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 I'm the Medicare man, and I came here to fill your Medicare gaps. And she literally said, oh, baby, that's a whole nother matter. You come right on in. I had to change my introduction shortly after. So never mind some few. So when someone has those gaps, you are now in the gap band. Burn rubber on me, dropping bombs, uh, oops upside your head. You are not an insurance person. You are going to give them comprehensive coverage that they can afford. So when someone is on a Medicare supplement, and we've got some great companies here, we uh, through Heartland have a relationship with Peak, and they have a fantastic med sub. Click, clack, contract, no testing. You know, need to know a little bit, but you're ready to go. But this person's on a plan F and a part D as a combined premium. They're paying $325 a month, $3,900 for the year. Plan num couple number two, I put them on a Medicare Advantage plan. We have a great Medicare Advantage company here today with Aetna. Love that, and the essential PPO, open access, essentially. Don't let me get into the details of product. But that's a zero premium plan. Everybody say zero. You can't say free, because we paid for it. But they're getting that for zero, and an annual premium of zero, because nothing times nothing leaves nothing. But it's a tale of two cities. Charles Dickens, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. A zero premium Medicare Advantage is fine until you get what? Sick. Until you get what? Really sick. But you're saying, well, Brandon, you're up here hawking Medicare Advantage. Ah, but there's a catch. So a tale of two cities. When I've got a Medicare supplement, what do you see all along the line on the left-hand side? Zeros. Zilch. Nada. Nothing. Nunca. How many more times can you say zero? When you are on a Plan F Medicare supplement, they pay nothing for nothing medically, and then they still need to Part D. But when they're on a Medicare Advantage, they paid a zero premium, but then they have bigger hospitalization, they have ambulance, and then they have radiation. And then there's something called a maximum out-of-pocket, which I colloquially say moop, there it is. Moop, there it is. Somebody say moop, there it is. A moop, there it is, is trouble. So what can you do to solve the moop problem? What, do you, what can you do with a problem with the moop? 
You can add a Heartland Financial Group or Heartland National Life Hospital Indemnity Plan. So now this couple is paying $80 a month along with their zero premium Medicare Advantage plan. They're paying $960 a year. That plan would cover, actually it was $280 a day for days of one through seven, so it covers what the plan I looked at didn't. It covers the ambulance, and in the event of cancer, that 20% radiation, they don't have to worry about it. They get a $6,000 check for $80 a month. So back to a tale of two cities. Now these two couples look a little closer. They look a little more similar. I've got somebody on a zero premium Medicare Advantage plan paying $960. I've got someone on a Medicare supplement playing F with a Part D paying $3,900. That other couple on the right is, is saving $2,940. And for my final expense warriors in the room, what do you do if you save somebody $2,940? Final expense plan. The thing they said earlier they couldn't afford. So now what do they look like? I'm closing the gap because I'm Charlie Wilson of the Gap Band. The hospital now looks different. The ambulance looks different. Zero, zero, radiation zero. And I'm saving 2960. Now let me be clear. 24% of the people will stay on option number on the left side. But people who are on the right side who can't afford 3900, they can afford $80 a month. And this is a group of people like the Waltons that would burn their mortgage when they paid it off. We burn our mortgage after 10 payments, and I ain't paying them no more. These people want to pay their bills. And an indemnity plan will absolutely give them that coverage. So it's like a bridge over troubled water, Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah, I'm just a walking trivia knowledge base here. But Simon and Garfunkel said, okay, the difference between zero premium and hallelujah, you know, it's free. And then the moot, there it is, which could be up to $6,700 or $10,000 depending on the coverage. A bridge too far. And how do you bridge that gap? With the Heartland Financial Group Hospital Indemnity Plan. So now all of a sudden, a zero premium Medicare Advantage plan with a hospital indemnity connected to it is fantastic coverage. And it seals the deal for people who say, well, I have to take zero, baby, but I don't know what will happen if I go to the hospital. And for this group in this age, hospitalization is not a matter of if, it is a matter of So for what about you as an agent? How many people are selling Medicare Advantage right now in the AEP? I've got agents that are going to do 100 of these, 150 of these over the next seven weeks. With a blended rate of $300, that is about thirty dollars to $40,000 of, of income that's going to come in. But here's the deal. You do the work October 15th to December 7th, but you can't get paid until January. So I always ask agents, who in the world is going to buy your Thanksgiving turkey? Final expense, hospital indemnity, med sub, because they'll pay real time. Who's going to buy the Christmas ham? Medicare supplement, hospital indemnity, and final expense. So that's your bridge. And then I like to do something called HIT training. High in, some of you know it that are training, that are gym people, high intensity interval training. But in this case, I say it's hospital indemnity, income transformation. You can go to something called CSG, push that button that says fill the gaps. You can then literally add your Heartland National to it in terms of the quote. It'll then say push the button to compare. When you do that, it will ask you what do you want to add to that coverage. And then all you do at that point is you see them side by side. And you can say, Miss Jones, I got a zero premium Medicare Advantage plan. That's excellent, right? But I've also got a hospital indemnity over here that's going to cost you $46 a month that will indemnify you and pay you in the event you have cancer, hospitalization, or need an ambulance, and there's other things you can add, but that was the core. So serve your clients at a higher level and don't let any other agent finish your work. So act number five, deserve, two minutes. That $900 million first year commission that's gonna be paid out in 2019, as you serve, you deserve. If you expand your horizons, your mindset, you can do it. Curtain call, there's a little more help to get your it together. Some of you passed the table. I've got books there that talk about how to integrate all of these products. There's some storytelling there in Sales Crumbs Trilogy. Excellent read. It's autobiographical. If you've got new agents, you run an agency, that book will transform the way they think about what they're getting into. But those books, as a triumvirate, and with the six hours at 65, the first hundred of you, if you decide to get it, there's actually a self-development program included that I did about a decade ago that's also been out there quite a while. Uh, you change now. 
But I would ask everybody to push the change button. Because everybody knows change is optional, growth and, and development is optional, but change is going to happen. But look at this. That's what I looked like some years back. Back when I could imitate Michael Jackson and it would actually fool you. <laughs> But here's the thing, when it started to fall out and I started to get the Sherman Hemsley, the little bowl, and hey, Wheezy, I said, uh-uh, I'm not going to embrace change. I'm not going to be acquiescent to change. I'm going to own it. Turn to your neighbor and say, own the change. So there's two quotes I'll leave you with. Shakespeare says, some are born great, some achieve greatness, some have greatness thrust upon them. I would ask you to achieve. And after a conference like this, there's going to be three groups, those that watch it happen, those that make it happen, and those that say what? What happened? I'm asking you to make it happen. And in the style of Don Cornelius back from uh, back in the days of Soul Train, I wish everyone in this room money, power, success. Thank you so much. That's my time. I appreciate it. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Hey, you're trying to decide between real estate or insurance. Maybe I'm going to sway you. Maybe you're eventually going to make tons of money because you watch this video. All right? Stay with me, okay? We have several different insurance companies. All right, we're even adding an acquisitions company where we're buying profitable insurance agencies. And I wanna talk about why.